Amen. Um, you turn mourning into dancing. I'm actually crying. Um, a year ago, a weekend like this, I was a buzzed on hospital after falling, tripping, and breaking my leg. And um, I was in, I was on the ward for four days before they could operate on me. Um, so I just want to glorify God today. I want to speak about my journey. Um, those of you who know me, I say that as long as I'm alive, you're gonna get tired of my testimonies. So today is one of those days. I am going to read because um, I don't want to go off track. <laughs> I have a lot to say. Um, I asked for some pictures. Um, are they there? Okay. Um, so I will start by just reading. Uh, you cannot have a testimony without a test. Um, in the past two years, all of us, we have faced different tests in our lives, including COVID. Uh, either some of you have had COVID or lost loved ones, or we've all gone through that fear because of COVID. But, you know, we're here, so God has brought us out of that um, pandemic, so we need to glorify him. Amen. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, when I was reading about testimonies, it says testimony means to give a report. So I would like to give a report and testify uh, what God has done in my life. I'll just give a brief history for those of you that don't know me. God is the healer. In 2015, the doctor diagnosed me with breast cancer. In 2017, they said it had spread to my bones, uh, my right right side and I was failing to even walk, I was limping. Uh, this was the second time experience in cancer and also heartbroken. In, in 2020, just after, um, just after we'd gone into lockdown, I went for a, a, a follow-up appointment and then they say that I've got lesions in my liver. They think that it might be cancer. So I had to go for surgery. There's a picture of me there. That's me in intensive care unit in 2020. Gray, my husband, was not even allowed to come see me. My children were not even allowed to come and see me. I was in the intensive care on my own. It was scary, and there was COVID as well. But God, me, God brought me through that one. Um, and then um, just when you think, oh, I'm getting better, uh, in August, then they say that um, I went for another scan. Then they say that, oh, even though we've done op operation on your liver, we've removed part of it, we can still see something. So you're going to have to have chemotherapy. That was my worst fear. I'm a nurse, and I know what chemotherapy is. And I've looked after people who have had chemotherapy. So I had to go through chemotherapy for four months. Uh, it was hard. It was hard. I ended up in hospital twice, and I thought I was going to die. But thank God, um, I'm, I'm here to say it. And I, I want to I wanna mention, um, just I want to say thank you to Auntie Laje, Crystal Marie, Tina, and Lois. These people came to see me because Gray was not allowed to come see me. And they were visiting me. They took time. They prayed with me when I was hopeless. Then I thought I'm, I'm getting better. Last year, uh, on a Friday, 21st of May, my hair had grown. So can you see a picture of me with no hair? Nobody has see, ever seen that, that picture. That's me. I lost all my hair. And I was wearing wigs uh, for about six months. Then my hair started growing. So I thought, oh, let me go to the barbers to have a trim. And what happens? I tripped and fell and broke my hip. I felt hopeless. I was lying in the street there for three hours. Uh, it was raining. It's off Whitmore Way. I was lying in the street before the paramedics could take me to the hospital. Then I was in the hospital for 
Four days before they could operate me, my leg was so swollen, I couldn't even let anyone touch me. It was just too painful. I was hopeless. In that whole process, Jason, my son, turned 18, I was in hospital. Tamara, 10, 15, I was in hospital. I missed all these things. And I really felt like God had left me. And I, I am just on my own. But some, a miracle happened because Gray started prayer, a prayer uh, in the mornings two weeks before I fell. They started praying in the morning, Monday to Friday, every morning. And I think he, Gray would have been very, very hopeless. But just doing those prayers with people, it encouraged him and it gave him strength and also gave me strength. So I am just grateful. Those prayers have been going on up uh, for over a year now. And in my hopelessness, God gave me a word in season. And this is what God said to me. Um, it's Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. People, most of you know about it. And I'll always say it. It says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Amen. I want to encourage someone today that even though you're passing through difficult situations, God is with you. Just hold on to God. Continue trusting. And like you can see me today, I'm even wearing high heels. <laughs> Just to celebrate because I, I love the heels. And when I fell, I, I, th I thought that I wasn't going to wear my heels. I had to walk with um, eczema frame. I think there's a picture of me walking with, yeah. That was the day after the surgery. They were trying to teach me to walk. And then there's another picture of me walking uh, with eczema frame out in the street. I did that and, and even a wheelchair for like two months. I borrowed a wheelchair from uh, Charlotte and Kathy. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you, you helped me on the journey. So today I just want to say to Jenny, Mike, um, Jennifer Wilson's family, John Jr.'s family, that continue holding on to God. You know, you will sit back one day and also testify about what the Lord has done for you. Amen.